One of the biggest strengths of Golang is its compiler, which abstracts many things for developer and lets you compile your program easily for almost any platform and architecture. And though it seems easy, there are some nuances to it and different ways of compiling the same program, which results in different executables. So in this video, let's explore statically versus dynamically linked executables, explore internal and external linkers, and examine Go binaries using tools like file, LD, LDD, and so forth. But before jumping into the code, let's first review what all of that actually means. We can draw some very simple diagram. Let's imagine we write a program, or even few, and let's imagine these two programs require some specific functionality that already exists as part of some C library. For example, it could be libnss to manage to parse DNS and maybe libcurl and etc. So let's put them on the right. And so the static linking is the practice of copying all the libraries your program needs directly into the final executable image. So it can look something like that. So during the compilation, we copy these libraries directly into the, our final executables. And Go loves and wants that whenever it's possible, since it's more portable and it doesn't require the presence of the libraries on the host machines. These executables are self-contained in a way. Dynamic linking, on the other hand, is when external or shared libraries are copied into the final executable by name during the runtime. And it has its own advantages too. For example, our programs can benefit from reason very popular C libraries that are already present on the host machine. For example, libnss, again, libcurl, libc, and so forth. Also benefit from the host updates without relinking the, these libraries. As well as the final executable size will be much smaller because you're not copying the whole program inside of your program. All right, after this brief overview, let's jump in and write and compile some Go programs and examine the binaries. Remember I mentioned that you can compile Go program to pretty much every platform and architecture, and you can check it with Go tool command. So you can go tool, it's dist, and list. And yeah, the list is very huge here, right? First, let's review a program that will always get statically linked. And for this video, I want to focus on Linux tooling, though the steps will be Pretty much the same for Mac and Windows, though the formats of executables are different. So let me search into my Linux virtual machine. And on my Mac machine, I can use something like OrbStack. Disclaimer, they're not sponsoring this video, just really great tool, um, really lets you create virtual machines really quickly. But then I can do something like ssh.orb. And yeah, I'm inside my Ubuntu machine. Let me remove everything from my previous session and make sure that we have Go installed. Awesome, so we have Go. It's maybe not the latest version. I think .4 is the latest now, but it doesn't matter. So let's write some Go program. And so I don't have any syntax highlighting, just uh, bare vim inside of this VM, but that doesn't matter. Mm, as you can already imagine, it will be a Hello World application, right? As you can see, this code doesn't use any fancy libraries, doesn't use CGO, so can be packaged into a single static binary. So we can do it using like go build, maybe into out, right, our main.go file. Then we can use a file program to examine the file type. So we can simply type file out, and maybe we can split into multiple lines. File program tells us that it's ELF executable, and ELF stands for executable and linked format, which is a default for Unix-based systems. Um, if you would do it for macOS applications, executable it would be Mac O, and on Windows I think it's PE something. Mostly importantly, it tells us that it's statically linked. And we can also use another program, LDD, to check if it's statically linked or dynamically linked. So again, LDD out. And yeah, doesn't print anything, not a dynamic executable. So basically, no dynamic dependencies. Cool, now let's go back to our program and change it a little bit. And in this iteration, I will use something more fancy. I will use the net package uh, from the Go standard library. So we can still have fmt, maybe we'll add net, maybe log just to log some errors in case. Cool, so we don't need this line. Um, I think it's IP address, IP net, error. And we can use something like some function like parse ci dr, dr pronounce it as cdr, I don't know about you. Um, 192, 0, for example, 21, 24. Um, quickly check for an error. 
And so at the first glance, it's a very simple program. It uses net stand library package. It parses the CIDR block, but will it produce statically linked or dynamically linked binary? Let's have a look. Let's build it first, and then use our file command as we did before. And pretty much the same, except it's now dynamically linked, and it used the kind of uses LD as interpreter, that's the default linker. Uh, the rest is the same, right? Now, what if you do LDD out? Right, now it prints the libraries that this executable depends upon. You probably already know about the mechanism called Sigo, called Sigot from Go, and it's actually used in few places in standard library itself. For example, in this net package, where it uses C libraries to work with DNS. And that's the reason why it's dynamically linked and we see libc uh, .sr here. So the question is, uh, can you make it statically linked? Let's say you want to have your binaries static for ISO distribution, for example. And just to be clear, as I mentioned before, uh, dynamic linking is also great because you benefit from the host updates and you benefit from these kind of complex uh, DNS lookup functions that are already included in the libc. What's interesting is that net package in Go has also the pure Go version, which kind of disables Go during the compile time. So, and we can tell it using the tags netgo. So kind of doing go build, go back and just add, I think it's dash tags, netgo. And yeah, we can do file out again, statically linked here, LDD out, not a dynamic executable. And so with this tag netgo, we disabled specifically for netgo. You can also do it using the environment variable CGO enabled. So globally, right? CGO enabled equals one. Do the same and then file out statically linked, and then LDD out, not a dynamic executable as well. The compilation process for dynamically linked binaries also includes the program called Linker. And um, in case of Go, Go has an uh, internal one, which is GoTool uh, Link, I believe. However, during the compilation time, you can also specify which linker to use. For example, on Linux, the default one is LD, and we can tell Go to use LD, and we can also tell LD to produce a static binary. And so we will benefit from static binary as well as full-fledged libc capabilities. So we can do go build. So let me go back to the same program. And what we need to do add here is LD flex. And inside we will tell it as I believe it's link mode external and then ext extra ld flex um, equal, no, you don't need equal, dash static. All right, I have a typo in external, and I think otherwise that would work well. It actually works, we just got a warning here that not all things can be statically linked, and maybe that's fine for our program. Let's just make sure that it still works. So we have this out, should print, right, our address and IP net, that's great. And so yeah, if you're using LD and you get such warnings, just make sure that they don't affect your application, uh, but they don't stop the compilation and so you'll still get the program executable. As I mentioned in the introduction section, you can compile Go code to pretty much any platform and architecture, though it can be very tricky with C Go, because it's generally tricky to cross-compile C code. So what if we, so I'm on Linux VM and I want to compile the same program into, let's say, uh, Darwin OS. So first, let me just uh, disable it. So CGO enabled as we did before, and also specify the Go OS equals Darwin and Go architecture is ARM64. Great, as you can see, no errors. Let's examine this file. And as you can see, it's a Mac object. That's the Mac executable for this architecture. Quite great, right? And so this go build command could actually fail if your program required Sego. Um, you could obviously overcome that by installing the toolchain for the target OS and architecture. And now also as a bonus point, I want to show you how to potentially reduce the binary size. So let's compile our program as we had it before, and then check the size of it, right? So I can do out, and it's 2.5 megabytes. And remember when we did file out, we could see that 
It's with debug info and not stripped. It tells us that our binary comes with some debug information and dwarf symbols, and we can strip them out if we don't need it. So we can do it again with LD flux. So we can do right go build and just do LD flux. I think it's minus W and minus S. And we can check the size again. It's 1.7, and it still works, obviously. And if we do file, it tells stripped. And that's it for today. Uh, obviously, there is much more to that, but it's very important to understand at least the basics of compilation and execution processes, especially if you build cross-platform Go applications. And I also know that some people use Zeek to cross-compile Go code with CGO. So let me know in the comments below if you have experience with that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I wish you a wonderful day and see you.